Okay, I want to go over how to use uh, quick scan detection. All right, so I already have my ASCII job open, LMN, that's fine. I have nothing recorded yet, and this is going to be as quick as I can describing what quick scan detection is. If you're going to use quick scan detection, usually it's just because you want to do a quick check, uh, find, or, or you know that it's going to be pretty easy for you to find rebar or objects that are going to be exactly perpendicular to the uh, direction of your scan. That's one of the reasons you want to use quick scan. Just know that when you do quick scan, you're not going to be able to save any information. It's going to be just live and you looking at it and you marking it. Quick scan recording is where you actually save the information and it actually records it on the SD card or on the tab, on the, on the unit itself. And then uh, image scan is obviously saved as well. So I'm going to jump over here to quick scan detection and you're going to see this screen pop up. Okay. So in this screen, what you want to do is uh, don't worry about color scheme. I mean, jump around whatever colors you want. I'll go into that later. But contrast, when I'm sc scanning, I actually like to have a little bit lower of a contrast, like maybe closer to four. Um, and my EM contrast, uh, that, I don't know, maybe higher or lower. I don't really use my EM sensor too much, but if you use your electromagnetic activity and you have the PS1000 scan, you know, just play with that, see what you like. Under parameters, concrete value, all you need to know about concrete value is that for most concrete out there, I bet you your concrete value is between a six and a nine, somewhere in that range. Um, it's, you'll know if it's wrong if you look down here at the cross-sectional view and you see that your depths are really weird and really off. Go ahead and try to change your concrete value a little bit differently until you see that the values and this images actually look a little bit more normal. That's how you can know you have the right concrete value. Just know that the higher it is, most likely you, you have like a, lot, a little bit more water in the concrete, more green concrete, I mean by that. Don't think about water on top of it. I mean like the saturation of the concrete itself has a lot of water. Maybe you have it a little higher. If it's drier, more airy, maybe it have a little bit lower. But that's all I'm going to say about it for now. Most of the time I keep it between a 6 and a 9 for most work I do in the States. Let me just take a brief moment to clarify what I meant by concrete value. So here's a table. Just take your time to look at it. Just know that whenever you use normal concrete, you can see on the table what I meant by I use the concrete value 6 to 8, 6 to 9. That's just the typical concrete values that I've noticed give me accurate depth. If I notice that it looks weird, no big deal. I can just quickly change it real quick to see what the scan looks like. I'm not going to hurt the scan. The scan is done. I can always go back and just change it, so no big deal. So what I recommend if you're struggling with this, trying to figure out the correct concrete value, play around with it. Do a scan, save it, and then go back and look at what everything looks like, look at your depths, look to see that things look clean and clear, and adjust as you go. It's not going to hurt the scan at all to do that, and you're going to see that later in this video when I do that. It's brief, but I, I do it, and you'll see what I mean. But I just wanted to make sure you saw this table to give you a better idea of what that was so it wasn't so confusing. Method. This doesn't really matter. You can always change this back after you've done your scan, but I keep it usually in standard. You have one other, one other option, advanced, that just uh, basically tries to amplify lower amplitude objects. That's the only difference of that. And again, it's just, I've, I've seen scans where I prefer standard. I've done others where I prefer advanced. Just keep that in mind. And then visualization, um, I keep my EM sensor turned. Well, I don't really keep it on during um, during quick scans, but I'll keep it on for this. Uh, if anything pops up really red or yellow up here, I know that I'm probably pulling a little bit of electricity at that area I'm scanning. And my cross-section view, I actually keep this at default. That's usually how I go and start working. I'm going to show you what RAW looks like after I scan once, but I keep this at default. So what are we looking at here before I scan? This is going to be my top-down view. Um, when I, if I look at the concrete top down, that's going to show up here. Over down here in this section is my cross-sectional view. So if I was to pick the concrete up and look at it from the side, that's kind of the image I'm going to look at. And the way you know that is, look, you have the depth here, right? So you have about a 12-inch depth area here. And I'm going to be looking to see where the rebar is poking here, or rebar, PVC pipe, whatever, whatever it might be, bottom of the slab. I'm going to see where it's poking in here so I can see, oh, that's how deep those objects are, okay? Now, this magenta line down the center, that represents the middle of my tool, and these dotted lines on the side represent the sides of the tool itself. 
okay? And I actually use the sides of the tool to mark my objects. So what I have here is I have a wax pencil, a wax pen that I'm gonna to use to mark everything. Uh, you can feel free to use anything you want, it doesn't matter, Sharpie, carpenter's pencil, it's up to you. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up and get going. And what you'll see, I'm gonna, don't worry about this mat, I'm just in a, um, a renovation room right now, so I just threw a mat down so I can make my marks on it. And I'm also gonna use this mat to show you what an image scan looks like. But long story short, um, I'm gonna use this mat to mark on, that's why I have it down. So on the side here, you see your live, your record button, and your X meaning cancel button. That's all that means. So if I'm an image scan, I'm ready to go, I'm gonna press this record button, and you're gonna see here it's live, and so as I push it, it's actually scanning. So I went a little bit, I'm gonna just scan, and scan, and scan, and I'm gonna explain what all this means in a second. Now I'm gonna come on back. Now when I'm scanning, notice how I'm, I'm not arcing my arm like this, so if I scan sometimes I go like this, right? That's a natural motion. It's important that you keep it straight because this is obviously a tool that is designed to go straight and you're gonna be more accurate if you go straight. So what I'm gonna do is, let's say that I'm done my scan. Now, if I'm just doing general scans and I'm ready to mark, obviously I'm hitting objects, right? Here's an object, here's an object, here's an object. Uh, down here, it's most likely my bottom of slab, right? It's consistent all the way down there. It's really heavy, most likely the radar sitting air. So what I can do now is I can just say, okay, there's a piece of rebar. Um, I have two ways I can mark it. The one way I don't use most often, I'll show first, right? Because here's my center of tool. Here's this little knob right here, center of tool. And down here, center of tool. I can just kind of poke where the centers are, move the tool a little bit, and then connect the dots, right? That's one way I can mark a rebar or an object. The other way that I find a little bit better is actually, you see these magenta lines? I can move the tool over to where the top-down view showing me that I have a piece of rebar, or I can move it over to where I see it over here on the on the screen down at the bottom where it's gonna to touch the circle of it poking in the side. And now I can come to the side and just dig my, my pen in there and mark the side on the right side. And now I'll move it over to the left and mark it again on the left. And now I can, now I have a piece of rebar marked and I'll do it maybe a few feet north and now I can mark it all the way. That's how I do it, okay? That's how I usually mark objects. So what I'm doing here though is, and you see my EM sensor, I mean, I know it's, it's, it's highlighted right up here, but there's nothing in here that's popping up significantly that's showing me that, hey, this might be a conduit, this might be a conduit, you see it, see it up here. So what I can do here though with this scan, I'm gonna just show you a couple things. Number one, these, this D-pad here is your friend. D-pad here is your friend. So the top down, the up and down markers are gonna move your top down view. So as I go down, watch how those rebars go away as I go deeper. Right, I'm going deeper, deeper, deeper into the slab. And now I'm getting this as my top down view, which is just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. I'll go back up and you'll see them reappear. Okay, that, ha that helps you go up and down through the slab. On the right side is my depth gauge. And you can see here where the uh, this magenta line right here, it's saying that I'm, I'm at the zero, zero of my slab. So as I go down, it's showing you how, how, how deep you're going. Okay, so what's this number beneath it? This 2.4 with the little two lines there that you see. Well, this actually represents how wide this window is to this window, this magenta dotted magenta line to this solid magenta line. If you notice, so watch, if I, as I increase that window, I'm gonna go all the way up. You see how I'm seeing more information? There's a lot that's showing in that window. I'm looking at a six inch window on the slab on the top down view. I like to have this as small as possible. Shrink my window down. So watch as I shrink my window down, even though I'm not changing the depth, as I shrink the window down, I'm seeing less and less material but well, my depth isn't changing. So now what I can do at this depth, right? My depth might be zero. My window is two, in, uh, two tenths of, a t of an inch. As I go down, boom, I'm seeing the first layer of whatever that is. Seeing the second layer and then the third layer appear. I can very easily layer by layer go through my slab and see objects. And then around I hit six inches and I'm bottoming out right there at six inches. So I hope that that helps you understand what a quick scan can do for you. Uh, just know that, um, so I'm still live, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my live reading off. I'll go ahead and press the right side button. My live reading's off, so now I'm done scanning. But now what I can do is I can come over here and go to my parameters, and let's say that for whatever reason my concrete value is off or I think my depths are wrong, I can come in here and adjust it a little bit if I need to. Um, just to give you an idea, let me go down to a three. Let me pretend that this is a very airy piece of concrete. I'll say three, watch how these things change, right? They just went down about an inch in depth. I'll go back to 6.5, which is what 
this lab is uh, basically better at. And now the depths went back to about two or so inches deep. Okay, so that's how that, that works. Uh, standard or advanced, so just to give you an idea, I'm gonna go to advanced real quick. Say okay. And just notice how it just changes your view a little bit. It just amplifies a little bit more, amplifies things differently. That's really how you gotta think about it, okay? Just choose. It, it's it. I would just use both and see which one looks better. It's going to be different for, for each scan. I'll come down here to visualization. My EM sensor is already on, right? But I'm not seeing anything up there, so maybe I'll turn it off. See how that went away? On, comes back. Off, goes away. I'm not seeing anything in there, where, so I'll get it out of the way. Cross-section. So this is our default view, right? This is what I'm looking at. This is what I, I prefer to look at. But one thing that's really cool is, let me go ahead and go to my raw data, okay? Raw. Let me change my color scheme to gray inverse. I was just there. Hang on a second. Okay, here we are, gray inverse. I'm gonna increase my contrast a little bit so I can see this more clearly. I really like this view to see the bottom of slab and to see the hyperbola. So it's a lot easier for me to see that material. So rebar hyperbola, rebar hyperbola. There's, even though I don't see it in the top down view as I come down, another hyperbola. And then here is my bottom slab. Now I know I'm saying rebar. I'm just assuming that's rebar. For what all I know, it could be a conduit, it could be a pipe. Um, I actually don't know this area very well, but I do know that there's an object there. It's very obviously clear that it's it's parallel, it's parallel, it's uh, linear, and it's an object. So now I'll come back to blue color scheme. Let me go back to visualization of default, and that's how I'd use this. Now I, I'm not saving any any information, but I can mark as I go. Like you just saw me with the wax pen, and it's very easy to just find very basic stuff in here. Now if I had it sideways, so this is where why it's important when you're using quick scan to stay linear. So here I am going sideways. See, it's still picking up that information. It's still picking up that information, but what what's happening is uh, it's not nearly as clear. It's really important if you're using quick scan to try to stay as perpendicular to your material as possible, just for that reason. So I hope that helps to get you started with quick scan. We'll get into these in other videos.